On Friday, July 13, 2001, the International Olympic Committee cast their final ballots. The verdict was in. Beijing claimed an absolute majority of votes, making it the third Asian city chosen to host the Summer Olympic Games after Tokyo in 1964 and Seoul in 1988. China would now truly share the Olympic dream. The victory also presented the country the opportunity to show the world the results of modernization that have been achieved over the past decades. China had finally arrived. For the nation, it was a dream come true. For Philip Jiang, this moment was also a personal victory. It was the capstone to a list of four Olympic dreams his granduncle Zhu Liang Song had for his country. In 2001, when they announced that China got the bid to hold the Olympic Games in, in 2008 in Beijing, we were very excited. Because we got the news first, my father uh, 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 tell me, hey, today is a Black Friday, but we got good news for you. Well, what the good news from Black Friday? You say, hey, China win a bit. This time we have the chance to back to China to see the game, hold it in Beijing. So I think my father was very, very excited. He said, hey, your grand uh, the fourth dream is, will be achieved. Zhu Liangsong's dreams started early in the last century when he was elected honorary secretary of the Chinese National Amateur Athletic Federation. In this role, he brought China's only competing athlete to the 1932 Olympic Games in Los Angeles, thus realizing his first dream of having China attend the Olympics. It was a first for his country. Four years later, in 1936, his second dream would come true when he helped lead a Chinese delegation to the Olympic Games in Berlin. Zhu Liang Song did not live long enough to see his third dream of China winning a gold medal realized, but that historic moment was witnessed by his nephew, Wei Liang Zhang, who was covering the games as a sports journalist for the China Daily. Xing Almost 80 years after Zhu Liangsong brought the first Chinese athlete to the Olympic Games, the news of Beijing's winning bid was a dream come true both for China and for the descendants of Zhu Liangsong. Proud of this achievement after so many years of preparation and development, Philip, together with his father and other members of the family, paid a visit to the San Francisco grave of the man who had ignited the hope that this day could one day come. At Zhu Liang's grave, the family gave their respect to their hero as they shared the news with him that his fourth dream, for China to host the Olympics, was coming true. When I got a chance back to the United States this year, then I go to the graveyard of my grand-uncle. I tell him, your dream will really complete it this time. I also involved the Olympic. You will never know before, <laughs> because this time I have the chance to work for the Shanghai Sports Museum. I collect a lot of things. So I really involved in the Olympic game. This is also my father is very happy. Yeah, I go to the graveyard with my wife and the grandson. Uh, I hope one day everybody will enjoy the, the game, that we are, everyone will love the Olympic. So I want to, everyone to see this four dreams was very good complete. I can think my grandpa will be very happy to hear the news. Also my grandmother is beside my grandpa. And I also tell my grandmother, I say, I say, grandmother, I was involved in the Olympic game. Do you happy? Then I think they will be very happy. Chinese 
，我们体育的前辈的梦想，从一个人参加奥运会，到一支队伍参加奥运会，到奥运会上面夺取金牌，一直到北京举办奥运会，这是我们几代人的梦想。我们作为一个中国人，希望在北京举办这样子最好的一届奥运会，提升了我们中国人的形象，开拓了我们中国人的经济和市场。对我们中国具体发展有强大的利益和好处。在咱们本土举行奥运会，这样的话呢，会给就是一些专业的运动员呢，鼓舞一些更多士气。肯定要主场作战，没问题的。全世界的啊，健、呃、儿都加油！中国人一定能办好这场亚奥运会。Following China's recognition by the IOC in 1979. And its subsequent participation in the Olympic Games in 1984 in Los Angeles, the fulfillment of Zhu Liangsong's third dream. China has resumed membership, or was newly admitted to many international sports organizations, carrying out many sports exchanges with the outside world. It has achieved continuous and steady development in sports. It has also participated in five more Olympic events. The 11th Asian Games, held in Beijing in 1990. Marked a major contribution by China towards the global Olympic movement. The tremendous success of the games encouraged Beijing to make an Olympic bid for the first time in 1991, hoping to host the 2000 Olympics, thereby proving that it had developed the full ability to host the world's greatest sports gathering. The bid was lost to Sydney by a narrow margin of two votes. In its second bid, to host the 29th Summer Olympic Games in 2008. Beijing beat nine other major cities thanks to China's great potential for economic growth and its remarkable record of achievement in sports. Vice Premier Li Lanqing declared, "The winning of the 2008 Olympic bid is an example of the international recognition of China's social stability, economic progress, and the healthy life of the Chinese people." We host the China the first time China uh, win the bid. To hold the Olympic game, this everybody is very happy because they lost a bit in two、uh, thousand. That during these years, China is get more progress on sports and、uh, everything on the country. So I think、uh, maybe this is the good, very good time for China to hold the Olympic game because now the China is more strong than before. So more and more people involved the sports themselves. 零零年的奥运会当时没有成功。那么后来申办成功以后呢，应该讲呢，全国人民呢都是为之一振，非常的喜悦。确实，这也体现了就是说我们这个整个中国的综合国力的这个整个提高。那么在世界地位呢，这个得到了整个的认可。现在我们看到就是说建了这么多这个呃世界上顶尖的优秀的场馆，像水立方也好，鸟巢也好，我觉得每一个中国人都想去亲眼去看一看，见证一下，哪怕就是看不到比赛，我们也要去到这北京去看一看奥运会。应该讲实现了这个中国人的百年梦想。中国就是从改革开放三十年以后，国民素质、国民经济实力大有提高。全国人民虽然就是说有许许多多这方面的困难，但是为了承办北京的奥运会，都做出了巨大的这方面贡献。像那个你其实。作为搿头个老百姓来讲，基本上几乎每个人侪会得打打乒乓球，是吧？侬打了好，打了差是两回事体。但每个人基本上，甚至于搿辰光条件差嘛，就等于马路高头国快杯，大家就打乒乓球打起来了。我觉着中国个体育还是比较普及个啦。虽然阿拉跳高头讲项目因为受到迭个局限因素，因为侬迭个必须要有大个场地，必须要有迭个海面，才能够练阿拉迭个项目啦。像体育项目高头，我觉着，辣中国一直蛮普及个，像足球啊、乒乓啊、篮球啊，侬看，包括现在学生子，侬看看，每一个小朋友侪辣打篮球，侪辣踢足球啦。The announcement of Beijing's winning bid was a dream come true to all people involved in the realization of this Olympic dream. The numbers had expanded greatly since the days of Zhu Liangsong. 
Now the movement was promoted and shared by legions of both aspiring and former athletes, coaches, government supporters, families, and fans. Just as Zhu Liang had hoped, the initial achievements of participating in the games would lead to a movement that lifted the dream to a higher level. The excitement and sense of achievement had by now become universal in China. The dream that once belonged to Zhu Liang Song was fast becoming everybody's. Chibe Shimon 我不清楚的东西在那里收藏了大量的奥运会的一些文化一些增长啊包括政治在举办了中国体育的斯波巴克最主要的一回事呃就是讲我不清楚清楚最高啊不清的生活中是失败了呃我不清楚清楚四年五
With Beijing as the host city for 2008, a further opportunity was created for the development of sports audiences locally and for the Chinese athletes themselves. Sports audiences became more appreciative when they can experience firsthand and in their own time zone the performances of the world's greatest athletes. The Chinese team, already strong, can also benefit from the home ground advantage provided by a familiar environment and the cheering of a majority of compatriots. Competition is expected to be fierce, but the Chinese are confident that their athletes can excel in a number of sports. Chinese athletes have home ground advantage, uh, which is always important. Um, traditionally, the home country can have more athletes capable of competing. Uh, the costs are not as high as uh, having to send teams, so there's more to draw on. Um, and I know that the focus, there'll be, there's a lot of national pride involved in these games and there's been a lot of work put into uh, athletes being given the best possible opportunity to do their best. So I, I, I am very, very hopeful that they'll perform very well. Chi 是比较最擅长的因为它是由强大的群众基础几十年以来中国乒乓球在世界锦标赛始终紧紧的占于主道的地位乒乓球是我们中国的国球在奥林匹克运动项目当中它是绝对有优势的还有一个就是羽毛球
后来呢，辣辣三六年个辰光呢，有一个负责代表队呢去那个柏林呢参加那个奥林匹克运动会，作为一个代表队。那么经过了介许多年数之后呢，搿次呢辣辣两零零八年，辣辣自家个国家国土高头，搿个项目呢被正式列为了一个项目。虽然勿是记金牌，但是作为一个正式个比，特殊个比赛项目。I'm thinking of uh, uh, beach volleyball, for instance. Uh, uh, cricket, tennis, those sorts of uh, th- those sorts of games were introduced. Now, whether they whether they survive or not comes down to uh, how popular uh, they they are globally, and is it really viable for them to uh, to be Olympic sports? Um, I think it's it's important for uh, for other, for the other for the viewers from other countries to understand that well, okay, this is what we do here, uh, and this is how we do it. So have a look at it and see what you think. Uh, it's again, it's part of the education. Uh, and and the knowledge that that ga- the games does impart to people who are sitting in their in their homes in other parts of the world, it helps to understand helps them to understand the culture uh, of a country. So I think it's very important. Whether it survives and goes beyond uh, these games depends on how 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 popular it it is with with practitioners. After winning the right to host the 2008 Olympics. The Chinese organizing committee gathered 210,000 submissions aimed at producing a slogan for the games. The final selection, One World, One Dream, would prove to be particularly poignant. At 8.08 p.m. on August 8, 2008, the opening ceremony of the Beijing Olympics will mark the culmination of one family's dreams and a moment of victory for all those who have fostered the dream when its achievement did not seem possible. I'm very proud of my father. I'm very proud of my grand uncle. I think the f- I'm very proud of my whole families, because in China I think that you can find another family involved for three uh, three generation, almost two decades, one uh, happened in the one family. The three generation they all involved in the Olympic Games. So I'm very very proud of myself, my father and my grand uncle. <laughs>